Alrighty, welcome back to another Fighter Showcase. I'm actually 100% sure that I haven't used Joe Lozon yet. Haven't used him yet in UFC 4, but we are going to... Where is he anyways? There he is. My opponent is going to run it with a created fighter. Yep, we always like fighting creative fighters. <laughs> always like fighting creative fighters. So, uh, Donald Cerrone and Joe Lozon set to fight UFC 274. Um, I did say that I was rooting for Donald Cerrone. I, I just, I don't know. I just, I would like him to get back to winning, man. It's just, it's been a long time. It's been a while. So I really like him to get back to winning. Let's get it. See what we can do with Joe Lozon. His stats are not great. Thanks. But I think the one thing that we definitely don't want to do is to end up like being pressured too much to where my opponent gets to impose his stats on me. So let's see here. If I can find a takedown, I'm going to take it. You guys are going to notice most of my takedowns, like I'm trying to see if I can get him against the cage these days. Boom. Sit him down. You know, just, just trying to, uh, trying to follow the trend of mixed martial arts right now. In the past, before more wrestlers and grapplers started using the cage, no. Keep going. So I control. You will notice that a lot of takedowns in the past were just blast double legs in the center. Of course, some fighters were able to do it better than others. But as the level of grappling in general, beautiful mount right there, I like it. Oh, damn, this man's, okay. Man's denials are actually not bad right here from mount. Deny this one. There you go. As the level of grappling has increased in the UFC, like everybody is doing jujitsu right now, even if it's, even if everyone is not doing jujitsu, like to become a black belt, like some fighters just do jujitsu, just enough jujitsu to where they're at least aware of some of the basic positions on the ground and they don't get themselves in trouble. You know what I mean? Like if if you've done jujitsu for a year, I'm telling you guys, if you've done jujitsu for a year and you step into into the octagon with strikes involved um you pretty much know enough to not get yourself in trouble in most positions you know what i mean like knowledge of jujitsu is not just about being able to do jujitsu it's also about understanding when you're outmatched because a big issue that a lot of people had in the early ufc days is they didn't know what they didn't know you know, they just didn't know what the hell they didn't know. And so they were like, they will engage Hoist Gracie on the ground without having, oh, he got it. See, it's using momentum transition right here. Keep going in the same direction. And that's sped up. Nope. Yo, shut up, ref. I'm working. Someone that knows jujitsu is going to know when not to engage. They'll know exactly when not to engage. If if you don't know jujitsu, you're going to engage recklessly without even knowing just how much of in danger you are. You know what I mean? So I don't even know how I got into that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I got into that conversation because like these days, man, like everybody knows something. You know, everybody that steps into the octagon knows something. You're not going to find someone step into the octagon who literally has zero jujitsu knowledge. Even if they're a striker who just came into the UFC, they know enough to know that they can't really fuck with you on the ground. So they avoid that. And everyone, everyone, especially those that don't want to be taken down. Oh, that should be it. Oh, he's fine. Oh, geez.
And so because of that, because everybody's practicing takedown defense because they don't want to get taken down, most fighters in the UFC, they've gotten very good at sprawling, you know, feeding you hips. They sprawl, sprawl, feed you hips. In wrestling, they call it uh, pee on you. <laughs> Those of you that, that wrestle, you know exactly what I'm talking about when I say pee on them. It's where you feed them hips and you keep, you keep, you stay heavy on top of them with your hips. And you walk, 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 walk to the side while keeping heavy hips. Most fighters do that very well in the UFC because of that. Like, just blast double legging someone is, it's getting increasingly more difficult. Unless your name is GSP. For most fighters, it's getting increasingly more difficult. And so they have to use the cage. They drag you to the cage. And the cage sort of acts like a barrier. The same way that the ground is a barrier that like pins you. Oh, he got it. Oh, jeez. Oh, God. Got it. Yes, cage acts as a barrier that pins you. And when it pins you, the, the, the opponent can take his time with locking his hands, getting into good position. The, the cage does the same thing the ground does. The ground makes you less athletic. God. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I am getting butchered right now, boys. I am getting absolutely butchered right now. I'm trying to have a mixed martial arts conversation and I'm over here getting my ass beat. Out. My corner screaming to get a takedown. I'm just going to take it easy for the rest, rest of the round here and recoup in the next round because this round has just been bad, bro. It's just been bad. My point was the cage does the same thing the ground does. The reason why Jiu-Jitsu chooses... That's absurd. That's completely absurd. That was not, that was not right. That was not right. <sighs> that was a rough round. We'll fix it though. The reason Jiu-Jitsu chooses the ground as the place where we fight is because on the ground, your opponent is not as explosive as they will be when they're on their, on their, on their, on their feet. This is something that John Danaher has, has explained very, very well. As you take a fighter, an athletic fighter, from his feet to his knees to his butt to his back, he becomes less and less explosive, less and less athletic, which is why jiu-jitsu happens on the ground because the most dangerous thing for, you know, in terms of like fighting is explosiveness, cha chaotic. When, when, it, when it's chaotic and there's chaos, when you take it to the ground, it's less chaotic. The cage does a very similar thing. You take a big, strong, powerful guy, you pin him against the cage, you reduce his ability to be explosive. Um, he's still on his feet, of course, so there's still that... Uh, there's still some explosion there, but it's not ex he's not as ex explosive as he would be if he was in the center. And so, a lot of grapplers figuring that out, they'll use the cage to try to get their takedowns. They pin you against the cage. When you're pinned against the cage, you're not going to be able to explode out of positions. And then they can lock their hands and then systematically break you down. A lot of times you see Habib does this systematically. He'll break you down to a knee. From the knee, he'll break you down to a hip. From the hip, he'll break you down to your ass. From your ass, he breaks you down to your back. And it's a systematic way of like breaking a fighter down from his feet. Like it's it's something that we're, we're learning right now. Oh, he got it. Okay. I'm fine though. See what he does. Very surprised. Very surprised he's he was staying on top of me. My turn. And that is something that that UFC Undisputed Three did very well. If you guys remember my UFC Three videos, when you have an opponent against the cage, you break them down realistically. 
Um, of course, you can just lift them up in the air and slam them on their back. But the more efficient way to do it is to break the man down step by step. So, um, typically, like if you watch Habib, he typically breaks opponents... Nope. He typically breaks opponents down to a knee with some kind of kazushi. He'll like move, he'll trip you. The trip off balances you. The fighter falls to their knees. When they fall to the knee, that's when Habib climbs up and gets some kind of um, hip control, like a body lock against the hip. And then from the hip, he inserts a hook. Like if, you th if you think about the way Habib breaks them down against the cage, it's typically how he does it. Look at that beautiful leg weave into mount. Once he breaks you down to your knee, he inserts one hook and gets a body lock around you. From there, he's looking to drag you backwards. If he drags you backwards, he's putting you on your hip. If he puts you on your hip, that's when Habib... Oh, nice. When he puts fighters on their hip, that's when Habib starts to slowly shift you away from the cage. When he shifts you away from the cage, that's when he starts looking to lock your legs in place. When he locks the leg in place, he can put you on your ass. From there, he starts to climb up. If he can climb up, then he can put your back on the mat. So it starts feet to knee, from knee to hip, from hip to ass, from ass to back. That's how, it, that's how he does it. And once he gets your back flat on the mat, good, good night. So that's, that's a huge value of the cage. Huge value of the cage. It allows you to break them down like that. Meanwhile, if you... Ooh, got him. Meanwhile, if you try to break someone down like that in the center of the octagon, they, they have too much space behind them to be explosive and get out of it. So, on your back. Nope. Oh, got it. He's up. Nice hip heist up to his feet. This is not an easy fight, but right now we're making smarter decisions. Round two was round three was rough, but this round is better. Got him. Okay. He's up. He's up, but I am certain that man's head is donezo. My stamina is pretty low right now. I don't know if he can tell. But at this point, man, if you're using someone like Joe Lozon, you don't want your stamina being low like this, bro. This is bad, man. If you were to rock me one more time, I'm gonna be on I'm gonna be ready to see if we can get him out of there. He doesn't have an overhand. Can we get it? <laughs> I couldn't. He's rocked. Nothing there. Ah! Don't do it. Done. Huh? Well, thank you. Thank you, sir. Good fight to you as well. Good fight to you as well. I wasn't expecting him to uh, send a compliment right there, but uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. All right, boys. First fight done. We're going to move on. Try to do two fights. Two fights. El Kukui, we're facing Tony Ferguson. You guys, watch out, man. We are going to... A, a vast majority of the fighter showcases this time is going to be in the lightweight division. Of course, we've done Donald Cerrone. Now, right now, we're doing uh, Joe Lozon. We still have Tony Ferguson, Michael Chandler, Justin Gaethje, and Charles Oliveira. So, I mean, this is the... This is the lightweight division fight fight card right here, bro. Yeah. Anytime you face a Tony Ferguson player, just get ready for spinning elbows, 
elbow into spinning elbow combo. That's that's a vast majority of what they're going to do to you. They'll pretty much fight you like Tony. Just erratic, chaotic, unpredictable. You're not going to know what the hell's coming. I think I need to attack this dude. I have to assault him. Uh -uh. He's entering. He's trying to intercept me with the cross every time. Watch this. See if I can show it to you guys so you see it. All right, goes for the front kick. There it is. One, two, three. Got him. On your back. I pre denied it. I knew he was going to go right there. What the hell? What? What? Omoplata sweep into side control. Dude. No. Oh, man. That is actually a pretty fun grappling sequence we got right there. Took him down. He got himself back into using the jailbreak, got himself back into full guard. Full guard transitioned to rubber guard, rubber guard into omoplata, omoplata into omoplata sweep, and I just took him down again. And he's gonna get it, just backside, he tries to get up. Oh, this is beautiful grappling we're doing right now. We're just flowing. Ooh. Let's go again. Back sit in. No. Nah. Oh, that was a very fun sequence right there. I like how the hook is always so freaking loose when you get the back like that. It's just, you're not, no one, you're not holding anybody in back control with hooks like that. Nope. Get that underhook into Kezakatami. We'll probably roll to the other side. And this is why I hate throwing ground and pound from guard. Right there. Right there. This is why most times I just try not to throw ground and pound from guard. Because not only do, do they have the, the opportunity to take your back by simply slipping one straight. They slip one straight and boom, your back is taken. They can do that. But even if they're, uh, even if you're throwing hooks to, the, to their head, they can block one hook, transition into, an, into a Kimura, and using the Kimura, uh, perform a hip bump and sweep you, which is absurd. It's absurd. Okay. See that cross he's throwing right there? Set him down. Nice. I would rather be the one attacking, bro. I'd rather be the one attacking. Scramble. Ah, okay. Okay. All right. Not bad, not bad. Okay, okay. There's some good grappling happening in this fight, boys. Some very good grappling. Hip heist up on my feet. See that? Trying to intercept me with the cross. So we're going to set him up. We're gonna throw, 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 and we're gonna slip the cross.
Aha. Uh -huh. Set him down again. <clears throat> yeah, and then from from right there, like the only ground and pound I'm confident throwing is to the body. Like I don't want to throw nothing to the head and get reversed. It's, it's absurd, bro. It's completely absurd. I should be able to tee off to the head. All right, got that wizard sitting back down. Trying to roll to the back, but he defends against it. Beautiful roll back into full guard. Do it again with that with the right with that right hand. Throw with the right hand, boy. Denies it. Hip heist up to his feet. Okay. Don't be too confident here, man. Yeah. He keeps trying to intercept me with that cross. I will get him. <clears throat> Something else that, that you guys will have to learn is there are certain reads that you don't act on right off the bat. Sometimes you just have to, like... Let your opponent get comfortable. Like, you've made the read. Let him get comfortable. Because the more he does it and you don't punish him, guess what? The more he's going to do it. The more likely he's going to go back to it. So the best way to get him very comfortable. Because you've already keyed in on what he's doing. Now you want him to do it again so you can counter. The worst thing is when you key in on what he's doing, but then he stops doing it. That's, that's, that's bad. So when you key in on what he's doing, you got to figure out a way to encourage him to keep doing it. And you do that by not countering it right off the bat, over and over again. Sometimes you make the read, put it in your back pocket, and just wait. Wait for the right moment. Right now, I'm waiting for his head to be damaged a little bit more. Then I'm going to make him pay for trying to intercept me with the cross every time. Okay, he didn't... Right there, he does it, but late. There it is, okay? We're getting ready. We're getting ready. There you go. There we go. Still doing it. Get off the cage. <laughs> right there. There we go. Put him down again. Let's see if he keeps doing it. Take down. No, that's a scramble, baby. And reshoot. Get up, reshoot. I thought I was going to be able... I'm just going to get up. I thought I was going to be able to hit him with a turn and take down and end up inside control, but I wasn't. So, I don't want to be in guard, bro. We're making a mistake, man. There we go. That's it. That's it. Beautiful. Fight over. Fight over. Ugh. Okay. And that's going to be it. Oh, so tired. All right. That's going to be it. Two solid fights with Joe Lozon. I, I, I mean, I don't know. I... He's not competitive, if I'm being honest with you guys, man. Like, I see so many opportunities where my opponents would have been able to just get me out of there if they were, if they were, like, better. Like, if I were to run into someone that was, like, as good as I am, I'm not going to be able to beat him with Joe Lozon. That's just, 
That's just stupid. I, just, I wouldn't be able to. He's not competitive at all. He's slow. He's not very durable. Uh, he gets tired very quickly. Um, he's not very powerful either. It's just his grappling is not exactly the greatest in the world either. He's just a below average character in EA UFC 4. Um, but still, it's a very good challenge to use characters like these and just just to see how how you do, how you perform, where you stand. Anyways, that's going to be it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, leave a like if you enjoyed the video. It helps out the channel. And I will see you guys later today with a second video. As always, stay safe. Peace out. Have a good one, boys.